in this age, it is easy to lose sight of what we have. Family, freedom, peace. Forty years ago, the world, this place, were very different. Not a day passes when I do not think of that time, when I'm not thankful that I am still here. Thankful for them. Why did we fight? We fought so they would not have to. So they would never have to live through the horrors we faced. After capturing Sicily, the Allies prepared to assault mainland Italy. While the Nazis strengthened their defenses in the south, we partisans fought to weaken them and hasten the end of fascist control of our homeland. The town of Pazzano was under attack. We fought to hold the Nazis back and to buy time for my partisan comrades to capture one of their artillery pieces. I needed a rifle. And bullets too. I moved to the window. The town was already burning. Took a few moments to test the weapon and my aim. I rushed to rechamber the rifle. send my position to my comrades. Although it seemed hopeless, Dante led from the front, rallying us to hold the walls. I had to get to Dante and help him. Before I could reach him, Dante was gone. I would mourn later. At first, I had an enemy to kill.
Our leader, my friend, had given his life begging the Allies to send help. We didn't know if it was coming, but for his sake, we hoped and we fought on. Tanks had arrived and we had nothing that could stop them. Our comrades had to capture that artillery. Captured artillery, destroyed the tank, and bought us another chance. The Nazi attack had been a reprisal for the death of a senior German officer. The kill ordered by Dante, the fatal bullet fired by me. The Germans knew we were responsible, and they struck back without mercy, killing partisans and villagers alike. It was a slaughter. With Dante's death, we'd lost our leader. It would have been easy for us to give up, to lose hope. Instead, we strengthened our resolve. We would need it for what was still to come. This place has so many memories.
Dante and his partisans needed an isolated place to hide out and train, and my father wanted to help. Our home became the headquarters for the local resistance. This is where my father taught me to shoot. He would stay here for hours, making me practice with his Carcano M91, a relic from the Great War, critiquing every shot. I drew on the hours I had spent with father's rifle. Calmness, focus, breathing. These were the skills I honed. each shot would land before I even pulled the trigger. An ugly weapon, but effective. Speed of thought and action. The shot became natural, like throwing a stone. I trained at every opportunity, pushing myself to perfect my skills. I had to improve with the pistol. It had advantages over the rifle in close quarters.
I began to feel at one with the weapon. I soon lost count of the hours I spent at those ranges. My comrades' lives might depend on me hitting my target. These weapons could be devastating if controlled properly. Precision mattered less than speed. In the early days, we had to make do with what we had, doing our best to pick the right tool for the job. We often had to gather what weapons and supplies we could from the battlefield slowly improving our arsenal. 